guys sorry for being inactive for so long my channel is still very small so i have to focus more on other projects i'll try to be more active from now on anyways if you guys want to support me hit the like button or buy any of this overpriced merchandise or you can become a politician and just force everyone to subscribe to my channel as this will really help my channel grow i have provided some 3d model links in the description since some of you asked for it i can provide my model cuz i used video copilot's motion design pack for detailing and we can't share paid models if you are working on a sci-fi film i recommend getting this pack it will greatly increase your production speed okay before importing let me show you the helmet file here i have deleted the extra helmet which you had and also deleted the lights and the stuff which i want to export is kept in these two layers the default layer is empty because everything in that layer will get merged with the base model's default layer next thing this scene's unit setup should match the base model's unit setup so go to customize unit setup and here i'll keep this similar to the base model scene Okay, save this and I'll open the base model file. To import the helmet, simply drag and drop the helmet file in the viewport. Select merge. Check on apply to all duplicates and auto rename merged materials. This way none of your materials get deleted. Now click once to place the helmet. Let me check if it's working properly. Okay. Now use the parent dummy and place the helmet on the head. Adjust its scale and all. I'll select all helmet parts and press Alt plus X to make them semi-transparent. If the shortcut doesn't work, select the object, right-click Object Properties, and change this by layer to By Object. Hit OK, and now Alt X will work. Now to further place it accurately on the head, I will just keep the eyes and the chin part, and hide everything else. Here we can see it's not aligned properly. I'll again use the parent dummy to fix it. This way the helmet parts that are hidden will also move since they are linked to the dummy. By the way, press Alt plus W to maximize and Ctrl plus X for export mode. This is just to help you see better. Chin fits properly but the eyes are not. I messed up. Should have checked it before digging. It's okay, we will improvise later. All right, let me unhide everything. Okay, now adjust the character model so that there is no overlapping or gaps like this one. Hard shadow will be generated in this area which we don't want. So let's fill this gap. I'll add another edit poly. Select vertex. Turn on turbo smooth so that we can see the final result. Select show cage and make the adjustments. Just fix the areas which will be visible in the camera. This seems okay. Let's render and check. Before that, I'll make a green material. While compositing, we will use green screen removal technique to hide the base model. This way, we will retain the contact shadows when we hide the body. Arnold has a shadow matte material which captures just the shadows, but it won't hide the objects that are behind the body, so we can't use that. Okay, I'll select a physical material. Let's bump its roughness to max so that there's no glossiness at all. Now change the base color to green and click on assign to selected object. Wait, let me just darken it a bit. For now we'll do basic lighting and texturing. In lesson 6 we will dive deeper in it. Okay, back to camera view. Go to the frame which you want to render, then open render settings. I'll use Arnold renderer. Wait, do we have lights? Nope. Ok, create a Arnold light. Select 
set the light type to sky dome in texture map select the 360 degree photo which i told you guys to take in the first lesson i hope you guys still remember about that now hit render here you can see we get some nice contact shadows there's overlapping over here which we will have to fix overall it's pretty good i'll save this frame set the format to open exr so that the background is transparent save okay now back to after effects import the image we rendered and place it here on top let me check uh, this one is frame 53 so in after effects go to frame 53 you can check the frame number over here now apply key light effect and in screen color pick the green color I know it looks fake, we have not yet worked on the lighting and texturing. Just check the placement of the model. Okay, now let's fix the overlapping. I'll render again from another angle. Let's do frame 101. And I'll open this a bit more. Okay, while it renders, I'll go to frame 101 in After Effects. Hide this one. And I'll rename it to the frame number. Okay, same steps again. By the way, the key light 1.2 effect is found in the keying. Okay, placement looks good. The face and hair is getting cut off a bit. We will fix that later. I'll render another frame just to make sure the tracking and placement is working perfectly. The placement is perfect. The hair doesn't fit in because obviously it gets squeezed inside whenever you wear any type of helmet. Unless you have a helmet. We will also fix this one while compositing. I'll fix the eyes because they are not matching. Then we can start animating. Since we have rigged this helmet and also have Morpher modifier on, we can't change the model just like that. We can't even use FFT or something to move the eyes in place, cause the rig won't work properly. So what we will do is make another morph target and adjust the eyes in that one. Okay, make a copy. This morph target will not be connected to the controller. Delete Morpher from this one. Select element and select the eyes. Then select polygon and select the corners which are near the eyes. I will use soft selection to move the eyes. So select all the areas whose shape you want to keep intact. Now turn on soft selection, reduce the fall off value. The entire polygon loop was selected, so deselect the polygons which we don't want to move. And here I don't want this shape to change cause it fits perfectly with the other helmet parts. So I'll deselect that much and do the same on the other side. Now move this up. Wait. Undo and control click on the vertex over here. Then move up. It works better with the vertex selection. Hold on, I'll just increase the fall off value. Okay. The shape still doesn't remain intact, so I'll select another polygon loop. And let's try again. Cool. Now let's fix this area. I'll select this vertex, reduce fall off a bit. Now over here, find the relax button and start spamming it until that area looks better. 
relax will sort of smooth out the selected area now this part again same steps all right not the best way to fix this but you know i like shortcuts now let's do the other side oh by the way if this panel is missing click on this button it might be minimized so this is what you may have just hit the show ribbon button and remember in modeling tab these options won't show up until you have edit poly applied on the object in case all of these panels are missing as well then right click in this area and click on ribbon i just unchecked it yes this panel is called ribbon okay back to the relax nice Also if you click on this arrow you get relax settings you can use this to fix the shape at once won't have to spam the button okay now back to the original helmet in morpher select another slot and pick this as target now change this value to bring the eyes in place i'll add other stuff again and let's check okay this fits better and had everything and let's check if the controller is working yes it is okay i'll unlink this one and throw it with other targets okay now place all other and men parts in You don't have to render and check the placement in After Effects. Other objects won't need that much precision compared to the face and the fingers. In my scene, the fingers don't match because there's some lens distortion in the corners, so the tracking doesn't match in that areas. I should have started tracking after the hand came a bit inside. Fear not, we got one more thing to fix while compositing. The model didn't fit perfectly, so I made a group of all the objects and added FFD modifier on the group. Okay now let's start animating. Learning animation is super easy but making it look real is very difficult. We will do basic level animation so don't worry if you are new. Let me explain the basics in a different scene. Here we have auto key. Turn it on. When auto key is on any changes you make in the scene will be recorded. Like if you change the position or rotation of a object or even any of these parameters. If you change the value it will be recorded as a key. and that key will be placed where your timeline slider is these keys are called as keyframes in after effects so i prefer calling them as keyframes here you can see the original position automatically got keyframe on frame 0 and we got this weird animation to delete keyframes simply select them and hit delete on your keyboard now if i move this auto key won't set a keyframe on frame 0 unless you have some keys set somewhere Okay now I want to set a keyframe without moving or changing any values for that hit this plus button it shortcut is k here it gave us the position rotation and scale key position key is red rotation key is green scale key is blue press k and you get all three together Go over here to the key filters and check whatever you want to animate. You can select and move any of these keyframes, but if you have overlapping keyframes just like this one and you just want to move the position keyframe, then go to graph editors, then select either of these. I'll select curve editor. Here if the object is selected, its keyframe will appear automatically. If not, then find that object in this list. You can see we have position, rotation and scale selected. I'll select just the position then select the keyframe over here and move them. Okay this is oops. So this is how you can separate the overlapping keyframes. Okay now let's try set key. You need one of these on if you want to animate anything. In set key your changes won't be recorded. You will have to hit this button or press K to place a keyframe. I always prefer to use auto key mode. Now let's animate some parameters. Oops, turn on auto key. I'll get rid of all these keyframes. With auto key on, simply change the value. 
that's it all parameters give us black keyframes it may get confusing sometimes if you are animating multiple parameters in such case to find out which keyframe is of which parameter you need to simply go on a keyframe then check the parameters this red bracket will appear on the animated one the bracket will show even if the auto key is off alright let's go back to iron man first let's animate the helmet so select the helmet's parent dummy set the corner system to local now go ahead in the timeline I want the helmet to land somewhere around this frame we can change it anytime now turn on auto key all the parts are already in place so we have the final position they have already landed so we just need to animate the flying part so without moving anything I'll set a keyframe over here now go backwards and move it to where you want it to come from I'll move the keyframe ahead cause it will be too fast here we are working on 25 ps so frame 40 would be close to one and a half seconds which is very fast now on frame 40 I'll move it here turn off auto key and I'll keep the helmet open let's see what we have ok now let's refine the animation auto key again I'll give it some rotation we want to get a rotation key on frame 0 because we have one rotation key frame on 60 ok now go over to the motion panel and turn on motion paths just like after effects it gives us this path if you are using older version of max you will have trajectories instead of motion paths trajectories won't have this handle so i recommend upgrading your max this handle is very useful you don't have to open curve editor if you have this move this to get a smooth curve Here we have three options, break, unify and auto. Auto will give us a smooth curve. We want much smoother than this. In break tangents, you can move both handles separately. And in unify, again both handles move together. It's the default one. You can also rotate and scale these handles. I'll make some adjustments, add another key in between. Ok now let's close the helmet. The closing animation can start from here. So select the ring, hit set key, delete the keyframe set on 0, we don't need it. I don't know why Max made a black keyframe, it should be green. We will close it somewhere around here. Ok let's see what we got. Cool. Here I want the mask to hold for a few frames before closing. So I'll slightly rotate it to set a keyframe. Go ahead and rotate it back up. Or you can make a copy of the previous keyframe. Just select the keyframe then hold shift and drag to make a copy. Let's make a viewport preview to see how it will animate in real time. When you play it in viewport it may be laggy depending on your PC. Preview will always show us accurate result. Here let's select custom range and let me check till where we have animation, till frame 110, so here I'll set 120, 
here select standard and hit create okay i'll animate two three objects more since they don't have a custom controller let's do this part the fft grid is very annoying i'll add a push modifier just to hide that grid I'm not gonna collapse or merge all these layers because we have Morpher modifier in here which we will animate soon. Alright, so our helmet had a parent dummy. Just like that, all these parts have one parent each. So basically, I just picked an object and linked some nearby objects to it. Now, this set of objects can be called a Iron Man part. I have made several parts just like that. Okay, let me find the parent of these objects. I forgot which one is. Okay, this is the one. Let me just get rid of the FFT. Let's make this part land on frame 90. So turn on auto key and set a keyframe on 90. Again, go back and I'll move this over here. Let me just explain some stuff about this part. The red object has morpher on it. I've already explained how to set up morpher in the third lesson of this series, so not gonna do that again. I have simply scaled down the elements and placed them inside. So this is what we get after morphing. We will keep it like this while it's flying. And once landed, we will animate these four values. All of these objects are linked to the object they are touching. And this ring was just one object. I placed its pivot in the middle, then detached it into four different pieces. While keeping the pivot as it is. So now if I rotate one of these, it gets hidden in the other part. Alright, let's continue the animation. I'm gonna keep animated objects in a different layer and hide the rest. You don't have to do that, it's just for increasing the viewport speed. Okay, moving on. Wait, this is not linked. Okay, good. This part will come from behind the camera. Let's see from camera view.
Okay, let's check the preview. It's low in the end. I kind of wanted to snap on his shoulder. For this, let's use curve editor instead of the handles. So go to graph editors, curve editor. Here you can see all the keyframes of the selected object have appeared. I'll select the last keys and click on set tangent to fast. Using this will make the animation faster. We use the easy ease in After Effects for similar result. Okay, now let's play. It's too fast, we don't want to damage his shoulder. I'll pull the last keyframe a bit further. Cool. Now the remaining objects. This part is going inside the body but it won't be noticeable in the camera view so I'm gonna keep it as it is. The back part will also go inside but it won't be visible in the camera at all so I'm not even gonna animate it. Cool, now let's do the morphal. We'll complete morphing at frame 100. So I'll go to 100 and change this value to 0. Right clicking on this arrows will reset this value to 0. As you can see we got keyframes on 0 and 100. I'll pull the keyframe which is on 0 and place it here. So that the animation starts from 90. Which is after the part lands on his shoulder. Ok next again same steps. This is what we get. I'll keep these keyframes close to each other for now. Now do the third one. We will end it here. Ok, now last. Cool. So this is what we get. Easy right? Wait, let me just reverse this. Okay, this is actually the correct order. I'm gonna keep one frame gap between all keyframes, so it's a bit slower. Ok let's see. Ok so that's how basic level animation is done. Same method for the rest of the parts. I have more 6 hours of animation footage but I'm guessing you guys don't want to watch it. I hope you guys learned something. Please like the video if you did. And in the next lesson we will do the nanotech effect similar to the one in civil war. Don't worry this one will be easy. Thanks for watching. See ya.